Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Really grateful you are here today on a very special day. My name is Pastor Renee, and along with Sister Tashina and Pastor Bryce, our uh, dynamic tech team, our fantastic praise band, we are here to welcome you to worship today. Today is a very special day. It is not only Reformation Day, which thank you for those of you who are red, we appreciate that. Uh, a day where we recognize Martin Luther's efforts and how uh, uh, talking about the church reforming and is continuing to reform itself. It's also Confirmation Sunday when our youth are going to be here to affirm their faith and to take a larger responsibility in the continuation of that faith as it grows. Really grateful that you are here. Uh, a couple brief announcements. We have some food drives coming up uh, um, in your bulletin. It's under Ralph, the October drive, but we're going to continue it into November. It's little items that we collect. We have a bin out there, and we make sure that those items get to our local food shelf to help address hunger issues right in our backyard. So if you are shopping, feel free to pick some of those up. We will make sure they get to Ralph or the food shelf on your behalf. Also, today is trunk and treat which means out in the parking lot from 12.30 to 2, we're going to have trunks that are going to be open and passing out candy. So feel free to circle on back and uh, join the festivities. If you know any young people who would enjoy it, it's a safe area for them to have a fun day to celebrate um, Halloween. And we have uh, Dave coming forward here. Is Sister T, oh, what, how about if you come on in, Sister T? Good morning. I'm Dave Webb. I'm the church council president here, and I just wanted to share uh, a few rhyming words to start. I have uh, the opportunity to be here for celebration on the Reformation as we celebrate confirmation with our congregation. Yay! So, uh, Pastor Renee sent me some talking points yesterday, but she actually wrote it as talking pints. So I thought it gave me the liberty to talk about Shore 96, yeah, and poor theology, things like that. But seriously, I'll stick to the script. I'm really here to uh, hold up and honor and celebrate uh, our deacon, Sister Tashina. She's been here now, and it's hard to believe, five years. Yep, go ahead and start celebrating already. <laughs> and what I want to hold up today in honor is just the things that I get to see as church council president that you may or may not see the incredible touches that she has, not only with all of you, but with the many groups and ministries that are playing out at Shepherd. Sister T is always there to provide the support and kind of that wind beneath your wings for all of our individual ministries. I see her touches in the office with our office staff. I see her touches on the board on technical things that we always get tripped up with as a, as a board. And last weekend, I was, I was able to see and drop off my wife up in Alexandria for the women's retreat. And I get to see firsthand how integral her support and leadership is on just one individual weekend. So at this time, I'm going to say one, two, three, and I'm going to have you shout, Sister T. And when you're done, feel free to stand up and cheer with me. One, two, three, Sister T. And let's give her a standing round of applause. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate you being there. And uh, uh, Sister Tashina said I need to put the balloons away because she didn't like the idea that they were on the altar. So we'll put those away in just a few moments. Just to help you understand a little bit about what a deacon does compared to a pastor. A pastor is trained in something called word and sacrament. A deacon is trained in word and service. She's the person that helps us connect our faith to our regular everyday lives. 
Uh, she's also uh, the person who heads up our youth ministry and is seriously concerned with each and every one of our young people's lives and how their faith continues to inform that life. And by the way, Sister T, as uh, so there, some people were walking out at the 8 o'clock service, one person said, I didn't know what we could be as a congregation until Sister Tishina got a hold of us and helped us become more. So really, really grateful. Oof, okay, uh, any other announcements? I think that's it. Let's prepare ourselves for worship. Will you take a deep breath in with me? Let it out and close your eyes. <sighs> Center your hearts and minds to be fully present here as we enter this holy and sacred time of worship together. Spend a few moments listening to the music and think about how God is calling you to pay attention to this faith that you have been gifted. Thank you, Praise Fan. Now you uh, turn to each other and pass the peace of Christ to who you came in the car with. The peace of Christ be with you all. Now, siblings in Christ, uh, would you stand as you are able as we sing our opening song and welcome our confirmands as they come in, born in cry. in a word of prayer. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word, protect them and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite any kids here up for the children's message. Come on up, kids. It's a fun one. Jeez. Well, hey there, Matthew. What's going on? Look at all these. I mean, just, just look at them. What are they? They're copies of the Bible. Oh, so what's the problem? Look, just look at them. We have Greek, Hebrew, English, Pigeon. Never even heard of that one. These are all different translations of the Bible. Isn't it neat, though? Sure, but why are there so many? Well, the answer is simpler than you might think. There are so many because everyone should have access to the Word of God in their own language. Well, I guess that makes sense. Martin Luther, and not the one from the 60s, believed that everyone should have the ability to read the Bible in their own language. Since Martin Luther was German, he began with that. He translated the Bible from Hebrew and Greek into the language that his friends and neighbors spoke. Now the Bible has been translated into over 700 languages. Well, that's pretty sweet. So by translating the Bible into the language and the words that his people spoke, they were able to bring the Bible, their Bible learning home. That's awesome. Prior to this, people had to go to church and hear a priest talk in Latin or translate it for them. By Luther doing this, they were able to learn more on their own, kind of like us contramats today. We're able to take what we've learned these past several years and apply that to our lives to take more control of our own spiritual growth. That's exactly right. Would you all pray with me? Holy God, thank you for giving us teachers like Martin Luther who put in the work and set the example so we might learn more on our own. Be with us as we seek to hear your words speaking to us through the words of the Bible and other ways throughout your world. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Matthew and Sydney. And kids, if you'd like to go to Kids Zone, you can follow Miss London and Miss London right over there. Our first reading today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Put 
Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel of John, the eighth chapter beginning at the 31st verse. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are the descendants of Abraham and never have been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave, does, er, the, the slave does not have a permanent place in the household, so the son has a place there forever. So if you, the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, things like that may be why. All right. <laughs> well, grace and peace to you all from God, our creator and our redeemer and our sustainer. Will you all please join me in a word of prayer? Holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the beautiful weather that we have and for the opportunity to gather in this space together. We pray that you open our hearts and minds to what you have in store for us, that we may go out and do your will in our lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right. So you may have noticed it's Confirmation Sunday, which I am really excited about. This is like my favorite Sunday, or at least one of them. I have a lot of them. But this is one of my favorite Sundays. Are you all excited as I am? Yeah? Awesome. Awesome. All right, so full confession. Today's message is for everyone and anyone who hears it. In person or online, hello to all of our folks online. And I pray that the gospel or the good news of Jesus is heard loud and clear for each of you. But to be fully honest, I wrote this message specifically for the six young people in, in the front pew, I, with them in mind at least. So I regularly ask them if they're ready for today, and they usually say yes, although I, I got a, a very fun laughed, at, laughed no, um, I, I guess I asked too many times, um, <laughs> um, but sh she's ready. She said she, said she was joking, so that's, that's good. Um, but Clara, Cam, Matthew. Brayden, Sydney, Paige. I don't ask you those things because I don't believe you the first time you told me. I asked because it's such a big deal. And I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention to the promises that you are making today. And it causes me to ponder about the promises that my parents made for me on my behalf, at my own baptism, and the promises that you are gonna make today that I made 20 years ago at my own confirmation service. And on Wednesday, we did the math, so it is 20 years. They wanted to know how much older I am than them. So that was fun. Um, and I would venture a guess that many of you ponder that as well. At least every time a baptism pops up for this confirmation, day arrives, even if just a, for a fleeting moment. The promises made on your own behalf at your baptism, the promises you have made on behalf of loved ones at their baptisms, the promises that we as a congregation make for those who are baptized here. And if you've ever been confirmed, the promises that you made on your own behalf at that time. 
And I pray that it causes you to pay attention. To pay attention to what's going on in our world and, what, and how God is calling you to engage in the midst of all of that. I mean, it's Reformation Sunday after all, right? We are a people whose faith community heritage is that of change and reform based on scripture and how we are understanding God to be calling us into the world, not in the same way God called us yesterday or 20 years ago, but today and tomorrow. And this is a, one of the ways that we understand the Holy Spirit to be at work in our lives. You see, being a Christian or Christ follower is a lot more than being a member at a church. It's a lot more than coming and engaging in worship sometimes, or even telling of others about Jesus. Now, don't tune me out or, or think that you don't need to come <laughs> anymore. Um, that's not the case. It's not what I'm saying. Those things are actually essential. In fact, they are of utmost importance. Theologian and author Rachel Held Evans puts it like this. They, her church community, reminds me that Christianity isn't meant to simply be believed. It's meant to be lived, shared, eaten, spoken, and enacted in the presence of other people. They remind me that, try as I may, I cannot be a Christian on my own. I need a community. I need a church. You see, what I'm saying is that these things are very important. Yes, to everything that she states, because I know that I myself cannot be a Christian without a community. I cannot do it on my own. And my guess is that sometimes you might feel the same way. It's really hard to do it on your own. But it doesn't end there. Being a Christ follower is an experience of the entirety of your life. And my dear confirmants, it means that you become a, when you, that means that you become a Christ follower and that it's not just a part of your life, it is all of your life. Every corner of every piece of who you are. And it's an action in this world that the church is here to support you in. And these are the promises that you are making. The same promises that we make at every baptism and every confirmation. We talked about these. You remember them? To live among God's faithful people. To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. To serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. They're pretty big promises, aren't they? Which is why the first couple of them are all about staying engaged in your church community. Because it's really hard to pay attention to what God is calling you to do in the world and where God is calling you to work out in your life without support. You see, this is not your graduation from church, is it? Remember that, okay? Not graduation. <laughs> it's the beginning of your Christ-following journey where you are now asked to be the ones to pay attention. To pay attention to what is going on in the world and how God is calling each and every one of you in to engage in that. That is the Holy Spirit at work in your life. And your church is here to support you. But let me let you in on just a little bit of a secret, okay? I'm saying that you need us. But at the same time, we need you. The last promise on our list, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. That's the action piece. And I don't know about you, but it seems like a pretty tall order. Because to strive certainly doesn't feel like there's a reachable goal if you're always striving. And if I'm being honest, it seems overwhelming and scary to take on. But when I talked with our confirmants about what it means, their answers gave me hope. They spoke with passion around the fact that being a Christian means to love. 
something so simple, right? We can all nod our heads and go, oh, yeah, yeah, we got that. But is it simple? Is it really, truly simple to love the other? Because when these young people were talking about that, they weren't just talking about being nice. They were talking about truly, deeply loving marginalized groups and communities and about seeking justice and equality and equity and having hard conversations so that we can learn and grow in our relationships with one another and with God and beyond into our community. They spoke deeply about what it means to be authentically kind to others and what it means to care for someone less fortunate than themselves while maintaining dignity for the other. My dear siblings in Christ, these young people, they're not the future of the church. They are the church right now. And they are living this stuff out in the world on God's behalf today, and they have been for a long time. I've been seeing you all. And it gives me hope, and I pray it does you as well. Our confirmands were speaking into Jesus' message from our gospel text today, which is a difficult one to be sure. Thank you, Brayden, for reading that for us. You see, in this text, Jesus is talking about what it means to be a Christ follower. He states, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The word truth that Jesus uses here is the same word that he uses a few chapters later when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's the same Greek word. Jesus is talking about following the words that he has spoken and the actions he has shown about living a life that is modeled after him. And then, as is common in all of our texts, at least it seems of late, the folks listening got hung up on the words. They got stuck on whether or not they were slaves or not. And I think we easily get stuck on those words, too. Jesus isn't talking about slavery in the way that we here in the United States in 2021 might come to think of it. Throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus is trying to get across the message that he is calling us into a life of freedom from the things that bind us or block us from fully living the life God has created us for free from the voices in our heads that say we're not good enough or we'll never be good enough or that you don't have the time to do that thing or that you or that telling you that someone is not worthy of your love or care or the love or care of the church because they are different and the word free i think we get hung up on that word too it's easy to assume that free in any context means i can do whatever i want but the reality is that whatever you do with that kind of freedom, your choices still impact the people around you. Whatever we do in the world, it's not in a vacuum. The life that we were created for is a life in community. Jesus frees us not into unabashed freedom, but into the life that we were created to live for the purpose of living or loving as Jesus first loved us for the purpose of, now pay attention, living among God's faithful people, hearing the word of God and sharing in the Lord's Supper, proclaiming the good news of Christ through word and deed, serving all people, following the example of Jesus, and striving for justice and peace in all the earth. So confirmation. Rachel Held Evans uh, also states, in the rite of confirmation, which acknowledges the presence of the Spirit in the believer's life, a thumb to the forehead reminds God's children of their mark and seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit, that it's invisible as your breath, but as certain as your skin. So pay attention and don't forget who you are. My dear siblings in Christ, let us pay attention. Know you are loved. And let us go and return that love to our neighbors, loving them as ourselves. And let us serve all people, following the example of Jesus, 
and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Amen. All right. I invite you all to rise and join with us in our song of the day. Mighty Fortress is our God. Thank you, Praise Ben. You may be seated. Awesome. I'm going to try to leave my mask on. Can you guys hear me well enough through with my uh, microphone? Awesome, being that I'm speaking so close to you guys. Confirmands. As Sister Tashina has already mentioned, God has made the church a place for us, a place for us to be. Ultimately, church is not buildings or denominations or pastors or deacons or customs or traditions. Church is about people. The church is a community of faith, and it is meant to be a safe place where you can be loved and you can show love and establish vital, lifelong relationships. Parents of Confirmands, I want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. It has not been easy to keep the vows you have made at their baptism, keeping your young ones under the ministry and guidance of the church requires determination and dedication. There are so many things to pull for your attention. But you've hung in there. You've kept the vows for your children today, and on today they fly on new wings of faith. And for that, we want to thank you. Confirmands. Let me tell you that the church needs you, as Sister Tashina already mentioned. The church needs your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. And people of God, you need to continue to support these young people in their new lives in Christ as they continue to build their faith. 
young ones, you need the church and the church needs you. It is this wonderful symbiotic relationship. And confirmands, you have spent three plus years in preparation for this moment in your faith journey. I ask you now, are you ready to assume the faith building promises that your parents made long ago? If so, answer yes with God's help. Okay, we didn't practice this before, so we're going to do that one more time because I want to hear it loudly. You're going to say loudly, yes, with God's help. Yes, with God's help. That is awesome. I now invite the parents and the sponsors forward for laying on of hands. So Sister Tashina and I aren't going to be putting our hands on your heads. So parents, feel free to get in there and mess up those hair. Oh, Cam was like, no, right? Congregation, I actually invite you to stand as you are able to join in in the responses. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the waves of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Confirmands. You have made a public proclamation of your faith. Do you intend to continue in this covenant that God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, and to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Fantastic. People of God, do you promise to support these young siblings in Christ and pr pray for their lives in Christ? If so, answer, we do. we do. Wonderful. Then would you join me in a moment of prayer, please? Holy God, we give thanks that through the water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Remain with these young people as they continue to live out their lives in faith. In your holy name we pray, amen. All right. Oh, hey. Matthew, all right. This is, get up in there, get up in there. Dear Lord, stir up in Matthew the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. 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 All right. Lord, stir up in Clara the gift of your Holy Spirit, the, wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> holy God, stir up in Braden the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> Holy Lord, stir up in 
Cam, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of your joy and your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Holy God, stir up in page the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Holy God, stir up in Sydney the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, people of God and sponsor, let's give them a proper welcome as newest adult members in our congregation. You may be seated. Led by the Holy Spirit, and with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious and loving God, when so many things seem to shackle us into complacency, help us know that we are free in you. Teach us how to love and accept the diversity in our land. Help us to treasure each other for the wondrous gifts and talents each person has. Help us to use the people of the resurrection who have been free to love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the whole world, as we watch the news, it seems as, as if there is violence everywhere. Today, we pray for peace. Peace for all who live in violence, all who live in hunger, and all who mourn this day. May they know your healing presence, and may we, your faith-filled people, work together to bring peace healing, and wholeness to all corners of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, this morning we actually give thanks to these wet grasses and lands and spaces that you gifted us with. This is truly an amazing planet we live on, but not all is well in creation. Help us to be ever mindful of all the creation that surrounds us and how our actions affect that creation. Help us to be better stewards of, these, of this one planet that we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our worship, we continue to pray for our next director of music and worship. We pray that that, that person is wondering about us as well. In your good time, holy God, make us aware of each other and the ministry you have for us both. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, surround all that are struggling with emotional and physiological walls of impossibility and those that feel like life is simply overwhelming. Help them see that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Help them know that they are not alone and help us see when they need an open heart or listening ear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, Surround those that are experiencing health and personal challenges, some that have been given new a new diagnosis, and some that have been battling what seems like a lifetime. We pray for Jody, Joyce, Ellen, Sarah and her unborn baby, Jamie, Mary, Dawn, Bob, Jim, Donna, Kyle, Bev, Anne, Arden, Gail, Margaret, Phyllis, Jessica, Marlene, Dave, Nancy, Zania, Frank, Kathy, and Lydia. Be with these people so that they may know that you walk with them always. 
Send your healing spirit to rest mightily among, upon these people and to all those that we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of the mission work everywhere, we lift up to you all the work that our ministry partners do to make this world a place that reflects your love. We are grateful for the impact they have made, and we pray for our ministry partners of Open Hands, Midway, Bridging, and Real Fruit or Food Shelf, and the Holy Hammers. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Kitamali, Tanzania, as we give thanks for their prayers for us each week. We ask for your protection and encouragement of our students who continue their studies. Send your Holy Spirit to guide our students and teachers in the entire Kitamali community as we continue to do your kingdom building work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayer and make us reflections of your light, that the places of darkness in our world would be pierced by your light, and that all nations would be drawn to you and overwhelmed with joy. Holy God, let this be so. Amen. Thank you. We're going to be entering a time of offering. Uh, we are not passing a basket, but if you would like to participate in our offering, our basket is in the back as you leave. We also encourage people, if you are an online kind of giver, to go to sohsv.org. There's lots of different ways to give there as well. Um, we have a, a stance at this church that everything that we are and everything that we have belongs to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So... Uh, and we are going to be uh, enjoying some music from Brayden during our offering time.
was a beautiful offering. Thank you. Would you join me in a moment of offering prayer? Holy Jesus, gracious Savior, as you emptied yourself for others, we offer ourselves and our gifts as a sign of our hope in your reign. Through these offerings, where there is death, bring life. Where there is sorrow, bring joy. Where there is injustice, bring courage for change. Holy God, make this so. Amen. Now, people of God, we're going to be entering a time of Holy Communion. It is now time to make ready those little elements that uh, you have, your little cups of grape juice or wine or cracker or bread. Those of you at home as well, make ready your elements. Don't take them yet. I will let you know at what point in our um, communion service that you would take them. Please know that everyone is welcome at this table because these are the gifts of God for the people of God, knowing that everyone is loved by God and welcome here. Because in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And let's pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may take your bread because this is the body of Christ that has been given for you. And you may take your juice or your wine because this is the blood of Christ that has been shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. Let's join our voices together with our communion prayer. Most gracious God, you restore us, you accept us, you forgive us. Our place at your table is always there for us, even though we could not be less deserving of it. Merciful Lord, we give thanks for the reconciliation we have received at the feast. Wrap us in your unending grace as we continue to live in our flawed world. Amen. And now I joyously invite forward Amy for some words. With Lisa Vanelli, I have had the proud honor of being a small group leader of this group of deep thinkers, proud and brave sharers and wonderful teenagers. Um, this next piece we're about to do, Confirmands, is um, an invitation and a commissioning for you to now become part of the leadership of this church alongside our wonderful pastoral staff who has managed to provide engaging and educational um, lessons for confirmation for you guys who have totally put yourselves in the middle of learning even after a long day of school. It's been an honor to be on this journey with you guys. Congregation, please join in the commissioning of confirmants into leadership within the church and body of Christ in the world. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ in the priesthood we all share. Help us to each acknowledge our baptism every day knowing we are claimed by God, acknowledging that as you, the confirmants, affirm your baptism, you are bound to God's promise, to one another, and to us. 
We welcome you into leadership in this church within our youth group, within our committees and governance, within our worship and beyond our doors. God has called us into this mission together and we rejoice in your affirmation and commitment to doing this ministry alongside of us. Amen. Thank you, Amy. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite our confirmands to stand. Are you going to join up here? Or are you going to do it over here? I guess they're coming up. And congregation, please stand as we uh, join our voices together with our sending song, their favorite, Every Move I Make. Thank you. 